Welcome to episode 3 of Final Fantasy IX Translation Analysis, a video series where I compare the game's English translation and localization to the original Japanese script. In the last episode we went over the Alexandria section of the early game and this time we're going to be covering the Evil Forest sequence and diving deep into the characters of Zidane and Blank. So get a comfortable seat and enjoy the ride. As soon as we get to Evil Forest, we see our first active time event, or ATE. If you're wondering what those are called in Japanese, wonder no more! There, that was easy. When Princess Garnet is taken away by monsters from the forest, Zidane has to make a big decision. To stick with his comrades in Tantalus, or to leave the band in order to go save her. After talking to Vivi, he recollects his first meeting with the princess and how she made him feel. He just can't seem to stop thinking about her and thus the player is faced with a choice. Most of us probably went with the first choice right away and if you do, here's the conclusion that Zidane comes to in English. Yeah, what's there to think about? She's cute and she's in trouble, that's all that matters. It's definitely one of his most memorable lines so while playing the game in Japanese for the first time I was totally expecting him to drop a kawaii there but actually all he says is the first part is indeed perfectly translated with what's there to think about, but the second part is rather different. Basically Zidane just says he can't migoroshi garnet. Migoroshi is a term composed by two kanji, the kanji for seeing or watching and the kanji for killing. So on a surface level it literally translates to watching someone be killed, but the meaning of the expression is actually to let someone die or be killed without helping them and Zidane simply can't bring himself to do that. Now that may not be as punchy as the English lines she's cute and she's in trouble, that's all that matters, but hey, at least it doesn't imply that our gallant hero would only bother saving pretty ladies and would leave ugly ones to die. That's not very nice, is it Zidane? <laughs> okay, no, I kid, I kid. I still love the English line, which does add some nice flavor and humor. However, this difference is actually extremely minor compared to what happens if you choose the other dialogue option, you know, to listen to Baku and forget the princess. To be perfectly honest, I'd literally never picked that option before, cause, you know, I have a heart, so I only just found out about what happens if you pick it while comparing transcriptions of both scripts online. But it is actually fascinating and I'm tempted to pick that option in future playthroughs since it prompts Zidane to go into a veritable soliloquy which shows a much deeper self-analysis regarding the nature of his attraction for Garnet. And from a translation point of view, it's perhaps even more fascinating as Zidane's monologue just so happens to be radically different in English and Japanese and can actually serve as the first major example of something that will happen multiple times throughout the game and that is the English localization somewhat playing down Zidane's more sensitive side as well as his penchant for waxing poetic when feeling emotional. I'm not saying this is always the case but it does happen multiple times, this occasion being the first major one. So let's compare, shall we? This is how the scene plays out in English. I don't know why I was chasing her so hard. I didn't really care about our plan at that point. And it wasn't just because she's such a doll. I can't explain it. I'm just drawn to her so strongly. Now let's take a look at the Japanese monologue where I'll be providing a more faithful translation after each line. Her eyes seemed a little sad. I don't know why, but they looked as if she was gazing across the ocean. And it was like her gaze was refusing to see the sandy beach that spread out before her. A gaze that didn't even glance at the seashell glittering with the colors of the rainbow. That's what it looked like to me. And I got the feeling we were a bit similar. So yeah, feel free to pause the video and appreciate the stark difference at your leisure. 
Honestly, I'm not even sure this can be called a translation. It feels more like a full rewrite. Like they didn't even bother to try and preserve the original monologue to some extent at least. Now, obviously, I'm not privy to the translator's thoughts, so I can't really fathom why they chose to do this. I'm sure the character limit didn't help, but that alone does not account for the radical nature of the change. Maybe they felt the speech would sound corny in English and that Western audiences wouldn't respond well to it? Who knows? But see, the thing is, despite being a thief, Zidane is actually a rather literate and cultured person, as we see in other occasions through his familiarity with Lord Avon's works and the story of Ibsen, or even in his ability to see through Ramu's tale and its meaning. And we also know he's a womanizer with a certain repertoire of pickup lines, so I'd say him waxing poetic about a moment with his love interest does fit his character overall and is an interesting and endearing side of his. And thus it seems a little excessive to tone it down to the extent of basically removing it altogether like they did in this scene. Again, maybe they tried to translate it but then felt it sounded off or cheesy in English, I don't know. But I do wish they'd kept some of it at least. Especially the line where Zidane notes a certain similarity between him and Garnet. Which feels like a pretty significant detail that I think adds a lot to the scene. Think about it. Zidane says Garnet looked as if she was gazing across the ocean, evoking the idea that she longed for something in the distance, to the point that she wasn't even paying much attention to what was around her and in front of her. Now, in my view, the fact that Zidane relates to this on some level is very subtle but nonetheless deliberate foreshadowing of his own longing for his true home of Terra. After all, he himself mentions later on that he's always felt this yearning to find his birthplace and know his origins, to the point that he once left the home he shared with his father figure Baku and his brothers and sisters in Tantalus. This is strikingly similar to what he saw in Garnet's eyes. Zidane had his eyes set on a distant land and thus neglected to truly see what was in front of him. He felt incomplete and full of longing for something more, for answers to questions that plagued his soul. Now, of course, on a conscious level, Garnet's distant gaze was because of her feelings of alienation from her mother, as well as from all the people in the castle who wouldn't take her concerns seriously when she voiced them. But, on a deeper level, it could also represent Garnet's subconscious longing for her own true home of Madain Sari, where she lived until she was 6 years old as a part of its summoner tribe. She may not consciously remember those memories at the start of the game, but they're there, and they do resurface later on. Not only that, it was implied at the very beginning of the game that Garnet was actually dreaming about them on the day Tantalus came to Alexandria and she met Zidane. Now, you might think I'm reaching or overanalyzing here, but remember, searching for your home, or a place to call home, a place to belong, is a recurring theme in Final Fantasy IX. And, with that in mind, this monologue of Zidane's can be interpreted as an allusion to how he and Garnet share the same longing and feel drawn to their lands of origin despite not being able to consciously remember them. And of course, all of this not only serves as neat foreshadowing to future events and revelations, it also makes Zidane's initial attraction to Garnet a little deeper than mere physical attraction. Which is why I find it somewhat disappointing that the translators chose to essentially remove all of this rich detail. Though I'm also disappointed that the Japanese developers hid this scene behind a dialogue option that most people will obviously not choose. I mean, come on, when you make a heroine this cute and then give us the option to go save her or leave her to die, <laughs> why put the more interesting scene behind the latter option? But anyway, that's it for Zidane's side of the episode. Now it's time to switch gears and focus on one of his buddies, Blank. This is when Blank really starts to make his presence felt, and he's gonna be a key figure for the rest of this evil forest section, so why not focus the rest of the episode on him, especially since as you may have gleaned from the somewhat salacious episode title, there's quite a bit going on with him, more than may have been apparent in the English version. Or maybe I'm just reading too much into it? <laughs> Who knows? You decide. You be the judge. So, as soon as Zidane makes up his mind to leave Tantalus and go save Garnet, Blank shows up and delivers the following line. There you are. However, in Japanese, the line is quite different. He says, Korine na, omaimo. 
Korine is a slangy or colloquial form of korinai, an adjective which roughly means someone who doesn't learn their lesson, meaning blank is already sussing out that Zidane is up to no good. So in English, instead of a mere there you are, he could have said you never learn, do you? And then in Japanese, he also sounds a bit more antagonistic towards Zidane's expressed desire to leave the band to go save Garnet. Let's compare his reactions to when Zidane breaks it to him that he's planning to take Steiner and Vivi and go save the princess. In English, he says, Jish, why do you always gotta go play hero? The boss is gonna kill you. While in Japanese, he says, Tak, omai no moikiri no yosa ni wa aikawarazu yake ga sasuze. This can be roughly translated as, Man, as usual, your unabashed goodness makes me sick. A little bit harsher, I would say. But in the next line, he actually sounds a bit more supportive in Japanese. In English, he says, Well, what are you waiting for? Go talk to the boss. While in Japanese, he says, Which can be translated as, Hurry up and go talk to the boss then. Keep dawdling here and it'll be too late. See how he actually warns Zidane that if he doesn't hurry up, he'll miss his chance to save the princess. So, basically, what I'm trying to get at is... Blank is a bit of a tsundere. Well, not just a bit, as you'll see in a moment. Zidane then recruits Steiner and Vivi to go save Garnet with him, but thanks to the magic of JRPGs, he stores them in his pocket so he can be alone when Blank confronts him one last time before Zidane leaves Tantalus for good. I've always loved this little scene, and it just so happens to be packed with slight and not so slight tonal differences in Japanese. So let's scrutinize it a bit, shall we? In case you're wondering, yes, this is the scene, or one of the scenes, that prompted this episode's title, Is Blank in the Closet? And yes, I am suggesting Blank might be into man, specifically Zidane, since his brief tsundere moment in the previous scene is ramped up to 11 in this one. But let's go line by line, shall we? First, we'll look at the English, and then the Japanese, accompanied by a more faithful and literal translation. Jeez, you really dig her, huh? Taku, kakko tsukeyagatte, sonna ni ano onna ga kinitta no ka? Man, why do you gotta be such a show-off? You really dig her that much? I can't sit around knowing a girl's in trouble. Goes against my nature. This line is pretty faithful already, so let's just skip to Blank's reply, which is where things start to get interesting. Whatever, you're full of crap. Omae no sono storeto na seikaku honto mukatsukuze. Notice that Japanese Blank actually uses a word borrowed from English in this line, namely storeto, as in straight which in this context would probably be most accurately translated as straightforward, in the sense of being honest and frank. So he essentially says, That straightforward personality of yours really pisses me off. Funnily enough though, even in Japanese the word storeto can mean straight as in opposed to being gay. So you could actually read this line, or maybe I should say misread, as Blank telling Zidane he can't stand the fact that he's straight. <laughs> it's probably just a coincidence, but I thought it was kind of amusing. What's worthy of note here is how Blank sounds a little angrier in Japanese, I would say. But their last two lines on this topic are what really raises some flags for me. In English, the exchange reads, Oh, I get it. You're jealous that I'm gonna get me a sweetie pie. Psh, she's not even my type. That may seem innocuous enough, but here's what the exchange sounds like in Japanese. Haha, <laughs> Oh, you're not amused by the fact that I'm gonna make friends with a princess, are you? Don't be ridiculous. Like I care. Now, I don't know about you, but to me that kinda sounds like an exchange you'd hear in a boy's love anime. Note how in Japanese, Blank doesn't say Garnet isn't his type. In fact, he doesn't mention her at all, and Zidane never suggests Blank is jealous of him because he might have been interested in Garnet himself. Rather, 
Zidane suggests that what's bothering Blank is the fact that Zidane is going to get close to and possibly get intimate with a girl. To which Blank gives the most Tsundere reply possible. Don't be ridiculous, like I care. And that's just such a typical line of someone trying to feign disinterest and acting like they're not jealous or hurt that their love interest is leaving them to go chase after someone else. Which is what Zidane is doing. He's leaving Blank, and the rest of the band of course, to go after Garnet. And Blank is clearly hurt about that, hence his attitude and somewhat hostile demeanor in this scene. Now is that merely because of a close friendship or do his feelings run deeper? Once again, you be the judge. I'm rather ambivalent myself, but I do think you can interpret this scene either way. And also, this isn't the only scene where Blank seems a little suspect, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's conclude this scene first. Blank then gives Zidane the same medicine that he gave to Vivi and Steiner and their exchange concludes with the following lines. Thanks Blank, I'll see you when I see you. How about never? In Japanese the exchange goes like this. Arigato yo Blank. Konna tokoro de kutabarun janai zo. Thanks Blank, don't you go kicking the bucket in a place like this. Tch. Nido to sono tsura ore ni miseru na. Tch. Don't let me see that mug of yours ever again. Uh, mug as in face, not Zidane's ability to do damage while stealing. But yeah, once again, I do feel Blank sounds a little angrier in Japanese, making him seem more wounded that Zidane is leaving him and the rest of the band to go after Garnet. And now, to put this question of Blank's leanings to rest, let us skip ahead two whooping discs, just for a moment, all the way to a scene at the start of disc 3, where Blank and Marcus talk about a love letter that Blank found which we know was actually written by Eiko for Zidane. Let's look at the English first. I wonder who wrote you that love letter? Well, just read the letter, I bet she's beautiful. Really? Are you sure you didn't write it yourself? I mean, you caught the letter falling from the floor above you, right? I'm telling you, she was too shy to hand me the letter herself. And if you don't think I'm a ladies man, you're wrong! Chicks are intimidated by good-looking guys, that's why. Curiously enough, the line, and if you don't think I'm a ladies man, you're wrong, is actually a reply to a line from Marcus that was basically cut altogether from the English version. See, in English, when Blank tells him he received a love letter from a girl, Marcus finds that proposition rather dubious and asks, are you sure you didn't write it yourself? But in Japanese, he says something else entirely to demonstrate his skepticism. Which can be translated as Are you sure? Bro, you're always saying you're popular with the ladies, but I've never actually seen it. As in, he's never seen any evidence of Blank being popular with women. And honestly, with the way he says it, we might even surmise he's never seen Blank with a woman, period. And then, when confronted with that truth bomb from Marcus, Blank tries to excuse himself with a line that in English was translated as Chicks are intimidated by good looking guys, that's why. This is faithful enough, but I feel the Japanese line is not only funnier, but also makes Blank seem even more suspect. Which can be translated as Well, Women find popular guys hard to approach, so that just goes to show you how popular I am. Now, again, I don't know about you, but to me this does sound like something someone deep in the closet and afraid to come out would say. And coupled with the earlier scene in Evil Forest, this whole exchange with Marcus, while hilarious, does make Blank seem rather suspect. I'll admit that when I played the game in English, he just came off to me as a lovable dork trying to look cool. But after playing the Japanese version, I'm not so sure anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's still a lovable dork, he just might be one in the closet. Either way, he's precious. So let us rewind back to Evil Forest to see just how precious he can get. After Blank shows up just in the nick of time to help Zidane and the others defeat the big bad of Evil Forest, its minions go on a rampage and the party is forced to run away. Zidane asks Blank to take care of the others, hinting that he's planning to, if necessary, sacrifice himself to let everyone else escape safely. But Blank isn't about to let that happen. 
despite his earlier tsundere attempts to feign indifference, when push comes to shove, Blank doesn't hesitate to sacrifice himself for Zidane, and ends up petrified along with the forest itself in one of Final Fantasy IX's most memorable and hard-hitting scenes. He does get better later, but the fact remains that he was willing to give his life to save Zidane just a few minutes after chastising him relentlessly for leaving their band and Blank himself to chase after Garnet's orange latex booty. Now, was this an act done out of sheer friendship and camaraderie? Or do Blank's affections for Monkey Boy run deeper? Am I onto something here? Or is my would-be Gaydar acting up and I'm simply reading too much into all of this? I suppose each player and viewer will have their own interpretation, which is the beauty of it, but one thing's for sure. Whether his actions were driven by a mere bromance, or true romance, there is no doubt that, as Marcus says, Blank is a true bro. And for that, we salute thee and thy sacrifice, O scarred beltman. Come to think of it, how the hell did a design like this pop up in a game that Nomura had nothing to do with? I mean, the dude is basically wearing nothing but belts. Phew, that episode turned out much longer than I'd planned and took a lot of work, so I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you did, do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so that you don't miss the next episode, where we'll cover the village of Dali and the journey to Lindblom, with a certain soft scene along the way. Alright, see you next time, Choco Bros.